Thank you. Thank you. You, you can't stand up. It raises expectations way too high. <laughs> don't, don't do that. In almost every single one of these separate issues, there is a component of the loss of state sovereignty, the loss of states' rights. And if you step back even further and stop looking just at this little woods and look at the entire national forest here, so to speak, this is probably the single biggest change in America from the founding generation to our generation. There are lots of things, you know, American wealth growing, American uh, achieving the, the status of the world's only superpower, all these, all, you can go down the list of all the great changes in American history. But the biggest one, and in many ways the most consequential one for our system, uh, is the loss of state power. Uh, Obamacare, I don't need to spend much time on that. Clear assault on states' rights. Uh, the, the governing of, of state health insurance of health insurance has been a state responsibility ever since health insurance came into existence. That's why we have insurance commissioners uh, at the state level. That's why uh, insurance law is principally a state law subject, although the feds have decided uh, increasingly that they want to regulate it. And what Obamacare does, <clears throat> if it goes into effect in its full glory, uh, it turns state insurance commissioners and state, uh, law, state executive agencies in that area basically into handmaidens of the federal government, administering uh, these federal exchanges. Uh, for another part of it, which fortunately was struck down by the stream, Supreme Court, was forcing states to expand Medicaid, forcing them. But let's go to area number two, immigration. We always think about immigration as a, a national issue. It's a federal issue. You know, the first thing uh, someone will say when they don't want to uh, do anything about illegal immigration, they'll say, oh, that's a federal government matter. Yeah, that's, uh, states can't, can't touch that. Well, no, actually, uh, it is a shared responsibility, and the Supreme Court has recognized that in the two decisions that came down in 2011 and 2012, and as in many other decisions. What's going on here is, is, is something really, really disturbing because, you know, there's a legitimate argument that the ACLU always had against these, these they, they would argue that they are somehow preempted by federal uh, law, that it was a bad argument, but now that argument is not being made by the ACLU, it's being made by the ACLU in the Obama Justice Department. I mean, the, it, that place is now populated with ACLU lawyers. I mean, they are suing state after state after state, and those lawsuits are still uh, continuing in, in the lower courts. Third area, election law. I'm not going to belabor this. You've all heard me speak about our Kansas election law, first state in, you know, in America to, to combine photo ID at the polls, equivalent protection for mail-in ballots, and proof of citizenship uh, when, you, when you register to vote. So it's working very well. And uh, if you have questions about it, I can give you some statistics. But not only is it working well, other states are following us. The Obama administration doesn't like the fact that states are doing photo ID, so they used the, uh, the Section 5 of the Civil Rights Act of 1965 to attack the states of Texas and South Carolina, uh, and a, a, another case, uh, the Shelby case coming from Alabama, not, wasn't on the, uh, the attack on the state. Anyway, there was a case that's already uh, been heard by the Supreme Court this term challenging Section 5 of the Civil Rights Act, which treats some states uh, differently than others, which I think is uh, unconstitutional, which I hope the Supreme Court will come to that ca same conclusion. But what you might not have heard about was what happened this Monday in the Supreme Court. Monday, the case was argued of Arizona versus Intertribal Council of Arizona, and that is a challenge to the proof of citizenship requirement that the people of Arizona adopted in Proposition 200. It's virtually the same proof of citizenship requirement with some differences, some significant differences, but a similar pr proof of citizenship requirement to what we have in Kansas. And the Obama administration weighed in in that case as an amicus party and argued before the Supreme Court that Arizona does not have the right to check someone's citizenship when they register to vote. Area number four, gun laws. Federal regulation of firearms, boy, isn't it interesting how whenever there is a horrific tragedy somewhere, the federal government has to jump in and say, wait, 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 let, let the federal government come in, we will fix the problem. And so we have these uh, outrageous bills that just made it out of committee last week in the US Senate um, for uh, magazine capacity limitations, a brand new uh, assault weapons ban, and, um, oh, and another one uh, regulating private uh, gun sales transactions between individuals. Again, federal government trying to come in, and once the federal government passes laws in these areas, the states lose their ability to do the right thing. So it is imperative, A, that we try to stop them in Congress, but B, that the states fight back. And I'm happy to say on this score that Kansas is fighting back. Um, the House of Representatives passed last week uh, by a huge margin, several bills. Uh, the two most important ones uh, expanded concealed carry to government buildings that don't have a metal detector, which I think makes perfect sense 
If they're not going to protect you with a metal detector, then law-abiding citizens ought to be able to protect themselves. But the second one, which I think is even more important, and I helped uh, John Rubin draft it. Uh, John isn't here today, but John is doing a great job in this area. Uh, and this is the Second Amendment Protection Act. And what it says is any firearm, accessory, or ammunition that is assembled in Kansas is stamped made in Kansas and never crosses the state line cannot be regulated by the federal government, period. And any attempt by a federal ag agent to regulate it is a felony in the state of Kansas. That is a very important constitutional pushback from our state. In many ways, Topeka is becoming the anti-Washington, and I think that's a good thing. <laughs> it's a good thing for our country, and I'm proud of that. Um, lastly, environmental policy. They don't take your questions. Um, the fifth area. Again, we think of the stupidity of the Obama administration's approach to the environment where humans are the problem, where uh, curbing growth seems to be their number one concern, providing jobs is not their concern, Keystone XL, for example. Um, but the other aspect of this is, again, states' rights. Once the feds assert authority, and sometimes it's, it's not even through an act of Congress, all too often under Obama, it's through the EPA passing a regulation, a, a formal rule that they have no authority to pass, then the states lose that field. I mean, think about, let me just give you a couple of quick examples. Remember the, uh, the coal plant in Holcomb? Remember that fight? Ronnie was in the legislature. Some of the people in this room were in the legislature uh, mm -hmm. when that fight was going on. Well, we won that, right? We got the deal done, and the, the plant's going to move forward, everything's fixed. No, it's still not built, because the EPA is not giving the federal go-ahead. The EPA, as I'm sure you heard, a uh, year and a half, two years ago now, uh, rendered a finding, as they call it, that carbon dioxide, dioxide, yes, that thing you are breathing, the gas you are breathing out, is a pollutant under the Clean Air Act, a pollutant. Congress never intended for what we exhale to be considered a pollutant. But by finding it to be a pollutant, that means that the EPA can pass all kinds of regulations on anything that has any remotely significant carbon footprint. By, by finding that carbon dioxide is a pollutant, that we are polluters just by living, 